Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Duke of Italy, your favorite lo-fi, messy hair, music YouTuber. And today, we're back with another part to the thrilling series that I haven't continued in a couple months, How to Have a Nice Life. If you're tuning in with us for the first time because you know everything about the band Have a Nice Life, this chart here covers every project, or almost every project, that Dan Barrett and Tim McCougan worked on, uh, who are the members of the amazing have a nice life so this chart covers so far most of the have a nice life projects as well as demos side projects various other things they worked on and today if i could categorize it as anything it's like the extreme side of what they were making basically last time we just covered have a nice life projects like from actually have a nice life and one side project where Dan and his wife made a Christmas EP, which while not that exciting on its own merit does lead to some really interesting side projects. Cause today it's, it's mostly side projects. And if anything, it's a whole lot of drone, even some punk, a lot of cool elements here. It's sort of like you take have a nice life and you separate it into its individual parts. And we'll be talking about that today. And last time we ended with the EP by have a nice life known as time of land. It was known for being a more ambient and drone-influenced release with longer, denser songs, really like drone metal adjacent sort of tones here where the textures are just super dense. And today, we go deeper in that realm. We reach a lot more experimental stuff. And this first one we reach here is actually one of my favorite Have a Nice Life projects at all. And in a way, it is a Have a Nice Life project. It is the second full-length Have a Nice Life in a way, except it's it's not Have a Nice Life. It's kind of like how Leviathan, uh, Rest of Leviathan, Jeff Whitehead, has Lurker of Chalice. And those are two projects that are the same people, because it's just him. And here, we have the same thing, where it's both Dan and Tim with their side project together, Navaller. Now, Navaller, this, is, this direction here is Blackened, which I'm a black metal fan. I'm a Have a Nice Life fan. This record is right up my alley for all the right reasons. It is just the coolest thing ever. It is awesome. It is totally something to behold. It is essentially a black noise project. If you like some of the more rock-leaning, gnaw their tongues projects, you're definitely gonna like this one. It is certainly recognizable as a Have a Nice Life project with the crispy Dan Barrett electronic drums. But other than that, you reach some disturbing territory with the textures and awful sounds and themes you encounter on this project. This is a project that your body doesn't want to register after a certain bit because it's just too unnerving and weird. It is a very noisy album and it makes sense because it was released not that long after Death Consciousness and Death Consciousness is an infamously noisy low fidelity record and Navaller is like deeper into that thing there. It's a, it's a love letter to black metal kind of like Sun's black one is but it's in this like just as dark way it's like it's it has a real american black metal style of tone to the whole thing not guitar tone but like vibe just it is foul it is utterly decrepit and hopeless and it starts off as in true have a nice life fashion with a giant uh radio sample or like a voice sample as they they did on a uh, sea of worry for destinos except here it's a guy on a radio show who gets a, a, a message sent in from a listener who talks about having heard what he thought was hell. I'm kind of switching the words around a little bit, but it's it's a really interesting thing. It's kind of ballsy for them to do that and then do the novel or music right after. Well, I already thought Angelic Process was similar to Have a Nice Life. This here is more like Angelic Process, but blackened, which makes sense because they're both similar industrial, drony, gazy projects here. But here it's it's more evil and harsh vocals and awful. And Dan Barrett does some killer screams. I could straight up stomp someone's head into objectivity. One of the heaviest songs I know. Don't go in my comments saying that there's heavier in the world. If, if okay. Real side tangent, if, if someone comes in being like, oh, you've never heard Slaughter to Prevail or any deathcore band, I want you to just leave my channel. I don't want you to mention any deathcore. Deathcore is bad. But if that's not what you're going to say, if you're going to say, oh, uh, Cannibal Corpse in invented a sort of pseudo brutal death metal sound and they're heavier. Or if you mentioned Suffocation, the actual brutal death metal band, dude, just, just listen to objectivity. It's, it's heavy. It's disturbing. It is unpredictable. It's Every song on this album is so deeply emotional and it'll make you 
just hate yourself by the end of it for feeling things either negatively towards the record or positively, but you will not be bored for a second. It will get you engaged. It's also got some of the best song titles of all time. Like, come on, Black Elk Speaks, Chokes, and Dies. That's insane. The Witch Box, when I covered this for uh, Nothing But Black Metal in November last year, that was one of my favorites then, and I, I still love it. There Isn't Anything. Dude, I, I don't know how long I could talk about this album. This album, I should do a quickie on this at some point. It's one of the coolest things ever. Yeah, it's great. If I if you couldn't tell by now, it's, it's great. It's a insane love letter of black metal. And as someone who loves black metal, this is absolutely something you guys need to listen to. And I don't critique charts as much as I should, but this points to less raw with the band Gate, which has the release now while they aren't looking tear it apart. Which, oddly enough, uh, is barely even true of a descriptor because it's, it is raw punk. And it's like pretty old-fashioned style punk. But it is still as aggressive as possible. It's kind of Dead Kennedy's harshness. I mean, it is less raw than Novoller, but the distinction between these two releases is it's really a bizarre transition. And for an 11-minute EP, I'm not going to complain. The emotion really works here. Dan Bear is clearly very angry on this project. The guitar work is super dope, but it is a bit too raw because the vocals are totally unintelligible. And the last two songs on the release are just awesome. They're straight up Kino, or they're riffy, they're a bit heavier. I like them a lot. The beginning of this EP, not as much, but you know, Dan is a pretty consistent guy, so I, I give this one a good. Then we get the distinction of punk with In Pieces, Lion's Right History. This, funnily enough, this, I would say, is the weirdest uh, affiliated project here, because after listening to all these things, I didn't know what else to think. It's not punk, it's an emo album. It is the second thing Dan Barrett ever released at all. The first thing being Have a Nice Life versus You, the, the Have a Nice Life demo. That's not even promotional. It's like super, super, super early versions of songs that didn't even end up on Death Con. Lions Right History was the band Dan Barrett went into to do emo music and to mixed results. It's an emo album for sure. It is not a standout in the genre. Dan Barrett's vocals are pretty decent. He's never known as the greatest singer out there, but he has harsh vocals on this. He has some screams, like, like screamo style screams, that I think work fantastically. I think he actually does a pretty good job singing on this album, all things considered. And it is an indie emo project. You definitely get like some plain guitar tones. It is decently well written, but it feels weird in context. I'm sure if you found someone who likes emo and they listen to this, that person would enjoy it more than I did probably, but I, I did go at it as objectively as possible. Uh, it is some okay, decently written emo, but it's it's got that kind of weird emo quality where it just feels flat. For a lot of it, it's just kind of un changing but i think the last song is great it's pretty emotional dance screaming is fantastic it's also got a pro bit of that emo structure problem where it ends up lacking in catchiness but i don't think this is a dud of a record here i i would say it's okay but you know emo dan barrett just throws me off so much so i mean really take that with a grain of salt if you guys want to find one more emo album to listen to in your life then check this out and we go back to time of land the ep and we come down here to uh, a Tim Makuga project. This is Consumer Within Computers, and it is super weird. It's heavy metal, sludge metal, experimental rock, and that's for a lot of it, but not all of it. And then the second half of the album, just unexpectedly, is minimalist drone music, which I'm assuming is why this is here, is these got these really bizarre tape loops that just melt your brain. It's like a textural massage. They're well-crafted drones, but not necessarily consistent. Uh, but overall, this project ends up feeling hollow and a bit weird. It feels a bit band camp, kind of, where it feels just kind of like things are being thrown at the wall here. But, I mean, it is Tim Makuga. I do trust his, his genius, really. Uh, I would say this is a good album, but I, I'd say it's worth checking out because it's good. And also, it's just such a weird... It's it's weird. Like, you don't expect this to exist. You know, I, I don't I don't see many records of this thing being mentioned. T uh, Tim being on it, it feels bizarre i mean not with the next music we're talking about but it's it's a cool little novelty piece as a few of these releases have been and we're not going to be done with that but i think some of them might seem like novelty pieces and they're not because next thing we talk about is the flowers of saint francis 
This is Tim McCuga's solo work. And this is when we get just a drone emphasis. We have drone music now. And I really think that only scratches the surface here. I think this release, while it being the most low fidelity Have a Nice Life affiliated project, it kind of works within that niche. And there is legitimate songwriting in these things. It is not just a drone ambient record for any of these four albums we're talking about because we're about to talk about volumes one through four that is what the chart prescribed uh there is a fifth flowers of saint francis album i didn't listen to it i don't know if i care to i kind of don't but it's not the worst project in the world because this whole thing it's like tape loops weird samples of stuff and it's sort of trying to create this impressionist vibe not of the musical writing style it's just like it's so vague you have to like form the figures and the tones of it throughout the weird samples it gives you. And I do feel like Tim plays a lot of instruments on these records here, but I, I really have no record of it. All four of these are roughly 40 minute drone albums. And volume one is really cool. It's dismal. It feels decrepit and isolated, very lonely. And it might be the droniest of all of them, but it's also the most pleasing texturally. I actually think it's kind of great. And volume two is certainly similar, but it's got black metal samples, which sounds really cool. Like you have like gritty, distorted tremolo pick guitar lines. It's also clearly lo-fi, and I would say it's a bit less engaging overall, but I would still say it's good. And then we have volume three, which is super low-key, bordering on ambient, but it has an eclectic sound palette, which I think is the best part about it. It is a bit anxious though, which is probably the coolest thing about it. But the first half, half of this release is better than the second half as most of these are just two-track albums. So, but volume three, I, I think, is good. And then we get volume four, which is the most weird one, and it is not for its benefit. So volume one through three, I think, are all kind of worth a listen. I think you could claim to have a favorite of each of those. But I would disagree if you picked volume four, because that's the weirdest one. It doesn't quite work. It is the most collage-like release of all of these. It's got the most random qualities going on. It certainly has its moments, as all of these do, but the other three had were, were serious, and this one is just not. It feels way too silly. I honestly think it's poor. I think it's my least favorite Have a Nice Life affiliated project because it's just, it's too silly. There's not a lot of heart that I can feel in it, but I'm I, maybe I'll check out volume five at some point and tell you guys how it is. And then... In my notes, I wrote this as logical conclusion, and this, this band's other material I will get into in the next video, but it's basically the droniest possible stuff, the most hard to listen to, the most hard to prepare for, uh, and the re very reason I started this chart, actually, um, Giles Corey's Deconstructionist. So Giles Corey is Dan Barrett's solo project. He has two. Uh, one is Blackwing, which is all synthesizer work, and one is Giles Corey, which is all acoustic instruments and instruments that he plays. It's nothing set up for synthesizers. The only thing that he has to uh, actively play for Blackwing is the singing. But for Giles Corey, most of that is actively played, or at least I think maybe there's a session musician at some point, but I, I really don't know. As far as I can tell, it's all Dan. But Deconstructionist is is very different because it's not like... Giles Corey self-titled, which we'll talk about next time. It's a very important record in the canon of Dan Barrett and Friends, but it is, uh, it's is—it's—it's so different from Deconstructionist because Deconstructionist is the last thing the band has released as far as we can tell so far. Giles Corey has been doing live tours, but Deconstructionist is the final Giles Corey release so far. And it is nothing like Giles Corey because if you think Earth Mover or Destinos, are long songs or maybe something off of Novoller or even the 20 minute drone tracks off of Flowers of St. Francis, you get the longest stuff on Jazz Corey's Deconstructionist. Now, this is an album that, even really calling it music, Dan Barrett himself said he's not really sure if it's music or he said it's not traditionally music. And what's interesting is me, I think it is the most traditional type of music here. It is. Uh, it, it's like actually tribal ambient influenced for a lot of it. It is a lot of rhythmic parts. It's very interesting. But before I say anything, binaural beats are all over this record, which is where two tones are played in each of your ears in a stereo mix, of course, and they're meant to give you weird auditory hallucinations. And this album, gosh, I could probably talk for 20 minutes about this album. There are instructions for it. So there's a PDF. 
and it's Dan Barrett's theories and findings about death and our perception of death. It is very, very interesting. Didn't take that long for me to read, less than an hour, but I have a copy of it. If you guys have trouble finding it, you can just email me or message me on Instagram. I'll find some way to send it to you. I will post it to my Discord if you guys ever ask. I think I have it pinned. But at the end of the PDF, it gives you instructions on how to listen to this album. And it says that you, what you have to do is lie down or sit, preferably in a lotus position, is what Dan said, in a dark, dark room, completely dark, and to wear sunglasses and a blindfold. Now, what I did was I lied on my bedroom floor and I wore sunglasses and I just closed my eyes the whole time and I just didn't move. And I'm a really twitchy person. Uh, I don't want to spill too many personal details about myself, but I, I twitch a lot. I move my hands a lot. There are videos of me just cracking my knuckles and stuff all the time, but I was just dead still for the entirety of this album. The PDF also says to enhance your experience of the album to use an, a CIA interrogation technique where you would tape on oven mitts which like deadens the sensory feelings in your hands. And it also suggested to fast for 12 hours. Now I was doing weird diet trends then, and I was wondering if I should still get into it myself. You guys know I'm, a, I, I'm into fitness a little bit. And I, w I was doing a extended period fast. It wasn't intermittent, but it was, but it was the other kind of fasting. And I, I literally didn't eat for like 30 hours at this point, but it was a long, long time. And I was super hungry. But what I did was I just lied on the floor and sunk into this thing. Now, Dan says you should probably fast for 12 hours before this thing. Um, I don't really know about that because I've only listened to this thing one time as it is such a massive, massive undertaking, but it is on Bandcamp and I wanted to just divulge all this information before I tell you guys my experiences about it. Because musically for this video, we could be done but we have to talk about Deconstructionist because even though it's not a traditional album by any means, it is meant to evoke some serious stuff. I recall having my eyes closed and seeing things form out of the liquid in your eyeballs, which it was like real figures forming out of it. Oddly enough, I thought the Anno Domini cover was sort of forming, which is the Have a Nice Life compilation, which is unofficial stuff, but I saw like a bearded figure. And you really think about a lot of personal philosophy stuff here. This was, I listened to it a long time ago, but it's basically, you just need to talk about it. But this will get you thinking in a really interesting way. I think it'll give you more appreciation of your life. I think it sounds kind of culty. I won't lie to you guys. It sounds super sketchy going into it. Um, and I guess I could talk about these songs a little bit. The last song is like 40 minutes and it is the most drony of all of them. It repeats one singular element that just keeps going and going and going. And the second part is in typical Dan Barrett fashion is a like a seminar on death where it was like, you cannot conceive of death as far as we know where, where uh, I mean, there's a common consensus that there's like nothing, but it's, you really don't know what nothing is, which is part of why it's so inconceivable. And it tries to get you in this mindset of that. And the first track is very tonal and you, you, you were kind of not totally into the album or the experience, I guess you could say, until I want to say like halfway through the first track where all these huge synths and samples and tones just soak in and it is so loud. And it's, it, I literally felt like I, my body floated off the floor and that's sensory wise. I'll, that's the only thing I'll say other than the little visions is you feel like you float off the floor and you're never really sure if you come back down. And I was really mad when my roommate was making noise once I, after I finished the record, uh, because I was just like, you can't, you don't understand what I'm in right now, but you know, unless you hear this thing, no one will. So, I mean, if I had to give this a rating, I'd have to say it's, it was a great experience. Would I listen to it any other way? Not really. Someone reviewed it on Rate Your Music, like an actual album, and you're not supposed to listen to it staring at your computer, taking notes, maybe checking your phone or whatever. It's, it's not like that. You really, really have to dive into it. And if any of you out there just disrespect this thing and misuse it, I, I really don't want to hear your commentary on it. And no, this isn't like, I'm not being elitist because I don't say you have to do this for every record. In fact, this isn't a normal musical record. I'd say you only have to do that for this. Those are the instructions Dan Barrett gave you. And it's a very important process. If you're going to put in 
the hour and a half it takes to listen to this thing, you might as well try. And if you don't want to listen to this thing, I get it, but I, I personally highly recommend it. And with that, I'm going to end commentary on the albums today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys can tune in next time where I will talk about Giles Corey and Blackwing and the remainder of the little releases here. Because basically they're super cool. I think they're totally worth your time. But, you know, I appreciate you guys. And I also appreciate a like and a subscribe. Any comments, questions, or concerns, comment section down below, please. And my social media is in the description. My Instagram, my Twitter, and my Discord page where I will post this PDF if you guys ever ask for it or you can just message me on there. I don't have too many people that bombarding me with messages, so I'll totally message you guys the PDF if you want it. And I'd love to chat with you guys on there about anything. And that is about it. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Have a good day.